There's two pages of questions. Hello, everybody. Hello. This is Manuel and I'm Kai, and we are both part of the uh, game design team at Port of Empires. And we are here to answer your questions about Port of Empires today. Um, so, as you have noticed, the summer event is currently live, and we're also here uh, to answer questions mainly about the summer event. So, yeah, um, let's get right to it, maybe. So, uh, as you know, uh, the summer event is one of our coolest events. It has um, the Wheel of Fortune, so you can spin that wheel with tickets that you get mainly in the quest line of this event. And you can win really cool prizes this time. So, um, we have two new sets uh, of buildings. Um, one is the Maharaja's Palace. It's like a big palace building, and you can build little other buildings around it, so it gets more powerful. And the two sets connect together, so they work yeah. great when they're placed next to each other. They're really cool this time. Yeah, and the second set is um, the Elephant Fountain, which, as Manuel said, you can place like right next uh, in front of the um, of the palace, and they look really cool together. So yeah, uh, whenever you have questions, um, just ask them. This is the moment where we are here to like answer all the questions you have for Port of Empires. So. I can already anticipate the first question. Who's this guy? Where's T? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we can start there. Uh, I'm Manuel. I'm also a game designer on Forge. I don't usually show up in videos, uh, <laughs> but here I am. This time, I'm not T. Uh, <laughs> maybe T is here next time. Yeah. Yeah, she's on vacation currently. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't see uh, any questions yet, so maybe we can go through our list of questions that we prepared. Um, oh, uh, Ian is uh, writing, hello. Hello, <laughs> how are you? Hello. Um, so one of the questions that I think was asked uh, like most commonly before we, um, when we collected them was, uh, why are some of the prizes only available once on the wheel? So, as you might have noticed, if you played um, the last year uh, of the summer event, um, we changed some of the uh, pricing dynamics, and uh, some of the prizes uh, appear only once on the wheel. Actually, we had um, the idea with this uh, time summer uh, event to make the content of the wheel, like the, the rewards that you can get there, much more appealing. So, um, last year you could win, like, coins and supplies there, and it felt a bit like, ah, oh, we could have done uh, maybe a bit better with like the overall quality of the rewards, and we wanted to do that this time. And But this also meant that um, like we had to find a nice balance, and so we wanted to not uh, give players a chance to win the same thing like four times, as, at, uh, at least not the very rare things. So that was uh, a decision we made. But overall, uh, all the wheels are much more rewarding now, so that's something you can really look forward to in this um, in the summer event. And yeah, again, if you have any questions uh, regarding uh, the summer event in, in, in Forge or like any other parts of the game, we are here to uh, answer all of these questions. So another question, um, and that's one we often get. Uh, <laughs> will it be possible to get the set items again in the future? Right. The plan is to eventually bring them back. I don't believe there will be specific, uh, a repetition of the whole event, but it's not out of the realms of possibility to include them as rewards for future events. Definitely. And I wish we <laughs> would do that because I'm missing <laughs> two buildings from my spring set. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> bad. Actually, I was super lucky uh, at the spring event and I won uh, every single one, so uh, <laughs> I, I was super lucky. Um, but yeah, we're also working on um, new features that um, will also have rewards in them. And um, yeah, I, I can't tell too much at this point, but uh, we are looking at the possibility of bringing the set buildings in other parts of the game as well. So maybe you will have a chance to complete your sets um, later this year. So John is writing, good morning, great game. That's awesome because it's not morning for us. <laughs> <laughs> good morning for you. Good morning for you, John. You're probably from uh, the United States then, or from like somewhere not close to, to Germany, because it's like five in the afternoon for us. <laughs> so, there are some questions coming in. That's pretty cool. Let's see if we can already answer them. Uh, is that writing? 
Kai, please add a Bigfoot incident to the game. <laughs> and actually, um, incidents is that's a great question for Mara. Sure. <laughs> I like that idea a lot. And if we do that, I would like it to be pretty rare so it becomes like a myth, an urban legend in the game. I know that some players are really uh, into having a very realistic game, but this is a, an interesting chance to get some Easter eggs and some interesting stories and jokes going, so it would be the right place to go. I will add it to my suggestions list. That's, that's pretty cool. I also like this idea. Oh, John is from California, apparently. So, yeah. <laughs> you probably have a nice sunny morning there currently. Uh, yeah, it's a bit, bit cloudy here in Hamburg. Not too bad. It's not raining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Hannah is uh, asking, will they send gifts? So, maybe um, you mean like if you can send gifts in the game to your, to your friends? And um, that's an option that uh, is currently not available, unfortunately. Um, but we're, we're uh, always thinking about um, like new features where players can interact with each other and have some meaningful interaction. Um, and the, the best way to help your friends currently is um, aiding them uh, in the friends list and visiting their taverns so they can get tavern silver and activate powerful boosts. And doing trades. Oh yeah, for sure. And helping them in their great buildings. So there are many many ways you can give people at least some things, like for example, watch points and negative buildings. So, let's see, maybe we get some more questions. Jeremy is writing, been playing for almost 200 days, great game. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> awesome, that's a long time already. Thank you. So you might get an achievement soon, which uh, I think we have achievements that uh, count the days that you're playing for, right? We do, but I think the very first one is a bit a higher number than this. <laughs> okay. Keep going, you'll get it. So probably you have something with this. So yeah, let's um, let's wait for uh, some more questions. Uh, you guys, if you have any questions about Forge of Empires for the summer event or for any other part of the game, just shoot. Uh, we're here to answer um, all of them. So yeah, um, some more questions maybe. One question we got. Uh, What's with the Asian themes this year? We just had the Shai Han quest line, which had almost the same setting as summer. And spring was also Asian. Yeah, obviously this also came up uh, uh, when we talked about it. Um, we like uh, having like a diverse game with different themes, uh, also themes that we didn't have in the game yet, and a setting in India and uh, a setting like in, in uh, Japan seemed really cool and interesting to us, so uh, that's why we went for them. But of course, um, we would like the pendulum to swing and um, get other themes as, as we uh, go with, on with the event. So. Exactly. I think there are two aspects to this. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is aesthetics. Uh, mm -hmm. This was a very interesting chance to get different looking buildings into the game that still makes sense and still fit within realism and history. And the other is diversity, because there are a lot of uh, popular, famous figures that um, are highlighted everywhere else. And we saw here a nice opportunity to try to bring, shed some light on figures that were not so well known, but they were also important. Yeah. So if you are reading quest text in the game, thank you. <laughs> uh, it is a Indeed. chance to tell stories that are not so often told. Indeed. So there are some more questions coming in. That's pretty cool. So uh, Paul Eric Jensen is writing some event too much portraits, no use for them. That's, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Um, some players really love these portraits, and we, uh, especially in the summer event, we constantly bring them back also for players that didn't get the portraits in the last year, so it's like your chance to, to win them. And um, it has to be noted that if you want a portrait already, you will not be able to win it again, meaning that you will skip this reward and you have a higher chance on all the other rewards. So it's actually quite a cool mechanic. So, maybe some more questions. Can we uh, have some info on future ages expansions, please? Uh, Jefferson is asking hmm. that. Oh, uh, when you say expansions, are you talking city expansions? Because those are constantly coming with new <laughs> ages. Uh, as for future ages, we actually had a meeting about this today. Uh, we cannot say much about it yet, but uh, we're thinking about it. Also, while trying to keep uh, somewhat realistic setting in the game, which is a very interesting situation to have because when you're talking about ancient history, we have a lot of references, we know what the buildings look like, we know we can use those as a reference, but as the ages of the game progress, we're already far away from the present. 
Uh, and we have to create new content that is exciting, but also um, plausible. So it's an interesting line to, to thread. Exactly. If we go into aliens, for example, people <laughs> wouldn't like it. Yeah. I would like it, but it's not. <laughs> I'm, I cannot just think about me. Indeed. So there is a question from uh, Tony. Are there any plans to expand Guild Expedition anymore? Or GE, which I think means Guild Expedition. And uh, actually, yes, we are planning uh, on uh, expanding Guild Expeditions. Maybe not in the ways you expected, um, but uh, you can look forward to uh, some more content to that feature uh, during this year. Um, so yeah, we are uh, currently thinking about it, uh, designing things, planning things, and we will be able to tell you more quite soon, I think. Some more question. Gennaro is asking, how are you guys? <laughs> I'm thank you. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> it's always a bit stressful to be live on camera, but <laughs> obviously uh, I'm fine otherwise. <laughs> so uh, uh, Thomas is asking, will Forge uh, be going into space in future ages and moon base maybe? <laughs> that's a very good question. And that's a question we are asking ourselves uh, constantly as well. So um, we will let you know about the future of Forge as soon as we like can share any more information. That is one of the places I would like to go, but it's always really tricky when you're talking about uh, stuff that is happening happening outside the player's city. So, for example, in the Arctic future and Oceanic future, the story is mostly told through descriptions, and of course it's represented in the buildings, mm -hmm. but they, it's not about things that are happening in your city. It's happening far away and someone is telling you. So... I would, if we go this way, I would like to have a better way to show what's happening there. Yeah, indeed. Um, Irina is asking, a few years back we won drawings that were added to our inventory. What are they and will they uh, ever be used again? Um, and will we ever use them? Um, so I think that was for um, some kind of promotion, if I remember correctly. I was. Not in the project yet, but I remember those uh, things because I, I, I saw them um, at uh, all the accounts. Um, but you can actually use them again by just clicking on them and then they will open an image. So that's kind of it. That's um, what these uh, uh, drawings do. You can just watch them, I guess, in the, in the browser. Ah, so many questions coming in. That's, that's pretty <laughs> cool. So uh, maybe we find some that we can answer. Will there be more celebrity portraits other than Bruce Lee? Oh, that's, that's an awesome <laughs> question. Um, well, obviously, um, we always add uh, portraits to the game uh, of people that we think would add uh, value to the game, but also, of course, we need to uh, make sure that we can actually add these portraits to the game so that it uh, makes sense for us that um, like it's, it's good with the rights. Uh, that these people uh, need to be dead for a certain time before we can add them to the game. So uh, we add only people that we feel like we can represent in the game in a meaningful way. Also, we have some famous historical figures coming up for historical events, and mm -hmm. the reward is also their avatar. So mm -hmm. yes, <laughs> that's my answer. Yeah. Is there a trick to win a special item on the fortune wheel? <laughs> um, that's a very nice question. <laughs> well, actually, you just have to spin the wheel and and try yourself. So. There's no real trick to it. I haven't found one, but if you find it, please let us know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's my favorite question, because we always uh, get it. Sean's asking, will there be an option to rotate buildings? Mm -hmm. Is it the same person asking every time? Well, never mind. <laughs> uh, not as far as I know. Uh, the way the buildings are created, uh, for example, some of them include text, like signposts, and all of them include lighting information and shadows, which would then be turning the wrong way and looking really weird. I'm sure our artists would not enjoy this feature. Yeah. So let's see. Um, let's go through all these questions. It's always really cool to see how many people are, are watching these and, and sending in oh. questions. So thank you to everyone who's sending in questions. Yes. Of course. So I just saw one here in <laughs> in Portuguese. Uh, so Aldina says, é mais fácil estudar de jogar, and that means, uh, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't translate this, maybe I should, we should move on to the next <laughs> <laughs> no, It's not that bad, but it's, 
I think it would lead us in a, in a negative discussion. So, let's see what other questions. <clears throat> so, there's a question from Carsten. Hey guys, I have a question. Is there any feature uh, that plans to enable motivating or polishing people's town in any time of the day? Meaning you don't have to wait 24 hours always, so you can help basically multiple times on the same day. Actually, this came up uh, in one of our discussions, um, I think during last year. Um, and it's something that's quite an interesting thing. So uh, maybe potentially we could add a function uh, like this as a, like a reward item. Hey, you can help this person like twice a day. Um, so far, we couldn't really um, um, do it because this timer of uh, motivating is also linked to the timer of attacking someone. and we. Definitely don't want uh, people to be able to attack and plunder people uh, multiple times during the day. But um, if we find a solution for this at one point, yeah, maybe maybe we can add it as a special option. So let's see, more questions coming in. That's really cool. Um, <laughs> is there, so uh, Michel is asking, is it possible to get an option to remove all buildings in one time so you can make it easier to build a new city? Like, did, did we discuss this already? It has come up several times. I have asked for it too. <laughs> so yeah, uh, obviously it's, it's uh, a dangerous option, like especially if you hit it by accident because like you have all these cool reward buildings and you don't want them to be like gone <laughs> with one click. So obviously it's something, if we add it, we have to be very careful that people can't like click it on accidents. There are also a lot of possible edge cases. At least that's what they told me. For example, you would need some yeah. time to place everything back in the place where you wanted it. And if your session, uh, if you close it accidentally, we would have, it would not be where you expect things to be. You would have to be able to do it <laughs> immediately. And see Sada Mena saying, Hola Manuel. Hola Sada. Hello. <laughs> so let's see more questions coming in. Um, one question from uh, Brandon. Will you guys plan on adding more uses for Arctic Future and Oceanic uh, Goods other than just tech and uh, guild expedition? Um, yeah, obviously um, that's something we're quite aware of that uh, we want to have uh, like places in the game where you can spend these goods uh, and also um, these goods when they are in your guild treasury. So um, it's something that is uh, on our mind and uh, whenever we design uh, new features um, and like we design new ages or like new stuff that we can add to the game, we design them with this in mind. So um, please expect us to um, solve this problem uh, in the near future. There is already one other place where you can use them. They are necessary for the campaign map in the oceanic future. So as you advance, you will need Prometheum and later Orichalcum. Yeah, that's true. Carsten uh, says, thank you for answering my question. Yeah, of course, welcome. That's why we're here. <laughs> um, Brian is asking, any chance of adding premium items to the tavern shop, shrine of knowledge, etc. Uh, at this point, it's not planned, but <laughs> that sounds like a really powerful thing. Um, <laughs> actually, it's an interesting suggestion to add like other things and boosts to the tavern shop. Maybe at one point we'll do it. Um, currently, there are uh, not uh, many updates uh, planned for the Friends Tavern, but that doesn't mean we'll never do it. So um, uh, stay tuned. Maybe at one point we will announce something in that direction as well. So, Fraser is asking, why is Great Britain leaving the European Union? <laughs> we don't know. There are so many questions coming in, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> so maybe while I'm, I'm scrolling and looking for uh, another question, we could also go um, to one of the uh, questions we have um, on our list. Um, it's winter in some countries, so why don't you run the winter event in the southern hemisphere countries and the summer event in the northern hemisphere ones? <laughs> <laughs> Have we ever discussed this internally? Yeah. Um, not specifically regarding seasonal events, but um, we have talked about specific events for specific markets. So, for example, in, in the diversity uh, concept of, of bringing um, new figures, uh, highlighting new figures in the events, we thought that some might not be relevant for the whole world, but they would be really relevant to a specific country. So I, I would certainly like to see some more Portuguese-focused historical events, but I understand <laughs> that 
the whole world uh, wouldn't care for it as much as I do. So, uh, Yvonne is asking, uh, back in April you said you were planning on a new army window. Is this still planned? Um, actually, we just talked about this today um, because uh, we plan some things uh, for the future and um, this might uh, make us want to revisit how the army management window works. So, obviously, um, we are aware that it's also not the best user experience right now with this window and uh, we want to have uh, like an update on that. Uh, soon. So I, I really hope we get to uh, uh, around to making it. So um, we will let you know and uh, keep you updated on this one. <laughs> okay, uh, Joao uh, Rossi uh, is asking, I am in the contemporary era. Why do I have a neighbor in the Arctic future? Isn't that somewhat unfair? Um, yeah, that sounds like uh, it's a bit unbalanced. Um, uh, and actually, there's also not what we uh, want to do with uh, the neighborhoods um, because, uh, as far as I understand, we want players that are kind of uh, with a similar progress in these yes, neighborhoods. So they can help each other, even through trades yeah. and relevant great buildings to each other. But the good thing is, they rotate. So I believe every two weeks, mm -hmm. you'll get new neighbors. So with, in, with luck, at maximum two weeks, you'll probably not have that neighbor anymore. Yeah. The, the uh, neighborhoods are like an incredibly con uh, complex thing in the background, so sometimes it can be that uh, small errors uh, appear there. Um, if you feel like it's something that's really uh, harming your game, feel free also to contact our support, or sometimes also players end up in, in uh, neighborhoods that are empty or something like this. Um, feel free to, to uh, talk to our support and they uh, might be able to help you there. Um, so many questions coming in, I will scroll. Oh my god, there's <laughs> many <laughs> hashtag up. Um, so Aaron is asking, when are incidents coming to the game? Mm -hmm. Well, that is something that we are testing right now. We are we just showed the idea to better servers. We are making some adjustments. I can't promise a date at this moment. We're still trying to figure them out to make them the, as best as we can, so that when they're released, they're really good. Michel is asking, is it possible to get an option to donate a random number of forge points from your inventory instead to click 588 forge points of packets? Um, uh, yeah, if you're talking about um, like donating forge points to great buildings, um, we might have an option soon to like make it easier, also including the, all the forge point packages you have in your inventory. Um, and if not, maybe then I understand so the question a bit wrong. <laughs> but um, currently, if you have a lot of uh, Forgepoint packages, we don't have an option to like let you open them all at the same time. Might be something uh, worth considering at one point. Um, so yeah, we will keep it um, in the back of our heads. So, more questions. Let's see. So there's a lot of questions coming in. Should um, we take one of these? We can. Um, maybe, I think we have one last one, which is, why are there no tickets in the wilderness this time for the summer event? And um, yeah, that's true. Last year, you could uh, collect tickets uh, like from trees uh, around the city. And uh, this time, we removed them um, on purpose because we wanted the summer event really to focus around the wheel and uh, bring the focus not like around in your city, but more on the on the actual uh, more important parts of this event. But we have uh, other events where you can collect things outside of your city. And as we just heard, uh, there are also uh, there's also a feature coming called the incidents where you also collect stuff outside of your city. Mm -hmm. So we're really big fans of this mechanic in general, and you can expect them in uh, many events and in, in many other features in the game. Um, uh, just not for the summer event because we want. Also, other events, uh, like for example, the upcoming fall event, uh, to feel more special when you can actually do that. <clears throat> so, Renata is asking, will there be a great building introduced that increases the incidence? We're not planning that at the moment, but I can certainly see that being a possibility. Uh, we always want to create great buildings that are relevant to the players. And we have already covered a lot of things that the players want. And since it wouldn't make sense to introduce a great building that does the same thing as a previous one, since you could have already mm -hmm. improved it to become so good, 
uh, we have to look at whatever new things we can find. And that is one of them. Yeah. <laughs> that said, we're not considering it at this point. <laughs> Jaromir is saying, I need more space in the game for buildings. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> that's uh, one that we get a lot. Um, that's kind of the main challenge in Forge, to like have enough space in your city to build all the, the cool stuff that you want to build. Um, and obviously, there are many ways for you to, to uh, get new expansions. And the best one is go to the campaign map and detect tree and unlock these expansions there. And also just go like to the end of the content because new expansions unlock as you go in the content, basically. So, still questions coming in. That's really cool. Oh, they're coming in at a pace where it's hard to read. They're scrolling out of the screen. Yeah. So, okay, I have to change. Oh my god. <laughs> they're just scrolling like crazy right now. Sorry. <laughs> um, Let's see. In Tokyo, so Jay is asking, in Tokyo there are buildings that overhang the streets, larger at the top than at the bottom. Would you consider that type of great building? Like, I guess, upside down pyramids or something like this? <laughs> well, we always have to be able to fit the building on the city grid. So when you see buildings in the game that have like a garden or a fence around it, that's also part of the building in uh, a technical sense. So we do have some buildings with interesting shapes, mm -hmm. but we always have to respect how much space they take. For example, mm -hmm. the Mogul Fear Brothers uh, balloon. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, so Neil is asking, any plans on the ability to trade or donate unneeded or unwanted inventory items? And that's a very good question, because uh, we know a lot of people win buildings uh, or, or things um, especially in Guild Expedition, that they don't actually need or they don't actually want to place. And so we are aware that um, there is like at least a potential that something like this could work really well in Forge. And it's something we're looking at. Um, it's something that we um, uh, want to address at one point, but unfortunately like there's no uh, real news here to be shared at this point. But uh, stay tuned uh, and we'll let you know um, in the future how we want to proceed with that. But it's definitely on our radar, so we want to address this uh, at one point in the future. So Aina is asking, how about adding a daily login bonus that had have higher rewards for coming back several days in a row? Ah, we're working on it. <laughs> that is, I think, the most I can say. Uh, we know that the treasure hunt uh, is not on mobile, not on mobile yet, and we want to at least have something that both players on both platforms can enjoy. Uh, and that's, we're trying to get those concepts working together for something special. Yeah. So, will there be guild, so Brandon is asking, will there be guild diplomacy features at any point? Um, sounds like a cool concept, although I can't really imagine how that would work in terms of in-game mechanics. Um, if you have any ideas uh, for such features, Feel free to write them in our forums, and which we read uh, regularly, uh, by the way. Um, and um, yeah, we might be inspired by your ideas um, because um, yeah. If he's coming from a civilization background, mm -hmm. I imagine it would be stuff like there's peace between these two guilds; they cannot mm -hmm. attack each other or trades. Okay. Yeah, stuff like this would be like an option for the future, maybe. So sounds like a cool concept. So, more questions, and there's still more and more <laughs> as we speak. So, Agnesa is asking, I love Forge of Empires. Oh, thank you, that's really thank nice. You. But that's not all. Um, she's also asking, could you win more expansions for the city? Um, so you probably mean like winning expansions in events or stuff like this. Um, it's definitely something that we um, have considered. Um, currently, it's more a, a technical uh, limitation that's holding us back. But uh, as soon as we find uh, like a way to do that, 
we might be able to also give out expansions um, in different places than just uh, the tech tree, um, the, the campaign map, uh, and like new eras. So that's something uh, we would really like to do and we are looking into. And um, yeah, stay tuned uh, and we might be able to give you more information. I see one there, Beto Leão. I'm Brazilian. Thank you for the Portuguese language. You're welcome. Actually, de nada. <laughs> I also enjoy having that option there. <laughs> so we have time for a few more questions. Um, and uh, VJ is asking, Arctic and Oceanic Treasury is useless. Any plans to use them somehow? Yeah, there are plans um, and we have this in the back of our heads and we uh, hopefully can announce uh, stuff um, uh, and information on this uh, quite soon. And maybe time for one last question. And let's see, it has to be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see, let's see. Michael is asking, could there be a city rearranging option as my city is a mess? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's also something we talked about uh, internally. Um, so in this hour, <laughs> you yeah. already answered the question very similar to this one. Yeah, and um, I, I think we even considered like a button that you could just press and it just rearranges everything based on some sort of algorithm. But uh, so far it was always like way too complex for us to implement in a, in a short time. So that was what uh, was holding us back. But at one point uh, we might find, uh, hopefully find uh, new ways to help you rearrange your city in a, in a more convenient way. So yeah, I think uh, that's it for today. Thanks all for, for tuning in. It was a real pleasure to uh, answer all your questions. And yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye. See you.